Unbelievable. Hey, welcome back, folks. I'm here talking with Karen Serrano. And uh, we were talking about, you know, the things that you've done uh, to, uh, to help out in this particular instance. And the fact was is that, you know, when, when something like this happens, people do have a lot of goodness in their hearts, and they, and they want to do something. And now that you've done it, or you're, you're getting ready to finish it up and, and do the whole thing, what, uh, what do we, where do you go from here? You know, it's, it's like, first of all, uh, what did you learn in doing this that, hey, maybe I might want to extend it? Or what did you learn to say, boy, I don't want to do this ever again? <laughs> what are some of those? Well, I'm not saying that I don't want to do this ever again. I, I, if ever, if given the chance, I want to continue helping out mm -hmm. these people because it's not a one-day thing. You, know, right. you can always continue to help them out. Sure. Um, they will be needing help as much as they can because rebuilding the, love, the livelihood, rebuilding their lives will take a very long time. But it's very challenging yeah. to help for, I mean, to, to ask for help, especially monetary help. Mm -hmm. It's very, very challenging. Like, as I I like what I mentioned to you a while ago, this is my first time to do this. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very challenging. I don't know where to start. I don't know how to ask for people's money. So what I did was to do the fundraising event because I think like people like to party. People like to mingle. People right. like to socialize. So I thought it's a good venue. They, they're going to be socializing. They will be trying out Filipino food for those who haven't yet. You know, it's a good chance to just dine, to jam, yeah. with live music, but they're helping out. So that's the best way I could come up with. So I d it's very, very challenging for me to be very honest. You know, that. and that brings up a point uh, that I'd like to do a little ad for the Unicasse, who's been on this, this show before, because they're going to do exactly the same thing that you're doing right now on uh, Saturday afternoon at Unicasse on the corner of General Luna and uh, Makati Avenue. They'll be doing the same thing. You come, you'll eat. Uh, Baby M will be singing and performing there, and uh, the proceeds will go to helping people in Taco Bono well, as well. So we have, I think an event is a really, really good way to do things, and that's something, maybe this is a suggestion for other people who feel like, gee, I'd really like to do something, I don't know how to go about it, you know, how do I gather the money, how do I get people right. to do this? Find out something that people like to do, have them come around, Make sure that they're getting their money's worth just by having fun and, and, and eating, and then the money, the extra money gets to go to the yes. good, right? And I was able to negotiate as well with mm -hmm. the restaurant owner, because mm -hmm. usually 2500 is the usual fee mm -hmm. to be able to avail of the buffet right. type of food. But because it's for charity, I was able to negotiate and say, hey, can you please just get the 1,000 yen, and then can I have the 1,500 yen? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> so really? that will go to... To yeah, the and, and for victim, people there, so yeah, 2,500 uh, yen so is much. about 1,200 uh, 1200 pesos, pesos probably yes, about yeah. that. And so, so you were able to get them to actually g give you the, give you their profits, I guess. Right. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, yeah, the owner was pretty no, nice. Yeah, that's he nice. was willing to help out. That's a Filipino who, who owns it, or it's just Filipino I restaurant? But uh, it's a Filipino restaurant. I think he's part owner. I'm not sure, but mm -hmm. I was negotiating with the Filipino guy oh, I see. who works okay. in the restaurant. And this is in where, Kawasaki? Or it's in Kanai, in Yokohama. Kanai. Oh, yeah, okay, Kanai, yeah. I know, yeah. The, I know the place. So it was a very interesting evening. And you had like 60 people came along? Around or? 60, yes. That's I was only expecting about 30 because of the very limited time mm -hmm. that I did. All the invitations just sent through Facebook and some personal invites I did for, for that very limited amount of time, one and a half weeks. So usually, you know, in Japan, people mm -hmm. plan things way ahead of time. Right, right. But... A lot of people gave positive response, so I was very happy. That's about one of the it. questions I like to ask. And as an old guy, I'm not real great on social media yet. <laughs> um, how many do you think of those 60 people came just because they saw it on Facebook? Actually, I did not advertise it on Facebook. Oh, you did. I invited I see, okay. each of my guests personally. Like oh, I, I see. sent personal emails to mm -hmm. each of them. Some in groups, you know, like my, this is my group of friends whenever I'm not at Berlitz. This is some group of friends I hang out with once in a while. So I did random invites. Okay. And then when I was so close to the fundraising event date, that's when I did mass emailing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just so I could gather as many people right, as I can. Right, right. Yeah. And you did twice as, as well as you thought you would do. Then. Yes, I really. had. Yeah. And that's, that's, a, that's the thing that, again, I want to keep saying this, and I'm going to probably bore everybody with it, but the fact is, is you can do really good things with not very much. I mean, you've got to have energy and you've got to have the passion, uh, the I passion guess, yes. to do it, but you don't have to have money. You don't have to have a lot of money. and You don't have to gather a lot of money either 
because every little, every little bit helps. Exactly. It really yes. does. And uh, you were able to to come here. I thank you for coming here and uh, thanks, being here today. Thanks to you for inviting me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. and it was just through a through a in through Japanese Ed. we say guzen, you know. Oh, guzen. <laughs> yeah, just a yeah. kind of a, a spur of the moment thing. Someone told me, but it was really great. And did you know anybody else that are doing the same thing there? Or you, did you run into any networking or things there? That uh um, No, but I do know that a lot of Filipinos in Japan are trying their best to help out. But mm -hmm. I think most of them, they are giving the, the money that they collected to, for, let's say, for example, Red Cross or other um, nonprofit organizations in the Philippines. That, that's also good. You know, but sure, sure. I, I promise my donors that I will be personally distributing the goods. That's why I'm doing this. And certainly that would be the that would be the easiest if you're going to do a sell, <laughs> you know, if you're that's selling the best, yourself, yeah. uh, then it's a look at I'm going to be the one that's going to be doing this. So uh, if it doesn't work out, you can come back and beat on me, you know. Right? <laughs> or, or it's whatever. my face and yeah, my name yeah. on the line. So well, sure, <laughs> yeah. sure, sure. And and that does make a difference to the people. It probably makes them feel a little bit better about yeah. are you gonna when you go down there, are you gonna take a look shoot some movies or shoot some pictures and things to take back? I will back be or? definitely taking lots of pictures for my donors. Right, um, of course, and, and put them up on the, on the uh, Facebook page. And I hope that uh, you'll put this interview up on the Facebook page as well. And you can I tell everybody that you're... I hope I don't look crazy <laughs> here. <laughs> so I, can't, no, I won't no, feel humiliated fine. posting this No, out well, here. there's no humiliation anywhere. Uh, people, this is the thing that... that uh, Again, people don't really realize how much good they can do with a little bit of effort. And the fact that even if they don't get all of the things that they'd wanted, they don't have to move mountains. They only need to move just a little bit. And I've worked for the last three years uh, or so with a think tank. And one of the things that we've really realized is if you really want to succeed, you've got to start at the bottom guy level, right, right at the very lowest level. And anything, if you help one family, you've done something that that family wouldn't have had. And that's the, that's the hardest thing to get people to understand. It doesn't have to be really big. It doesn't have to be great. Because yeah. it is great just being one thing, you know. Right. It's just hard because, you know, like some of the people that actually gave donations to me, um, that, that gave their donations, they don't know me personally, some mm -hmm. of them, but they still trusted me. So that really feels so good. Sure, it's very sure. heartwarming. Um, but... I don't want to ruin that trust, so I'm doing yeah, this. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's good. So getting back to it again, you, you still haven't decided, you know, whether you're, you're going to do it anymore. But what I'd like to find out, what was, what was the, the hardest part at, at this point? What was the hardest part of doing this, do you think? Right now, I think that right now I can't really say anything that's too difficult except for asking for people's donations mm -hmm. because everything just kind of flows naturally. Everything is... Um, doing everything is falling into place. Let's okay. just say that it's it's doing it like that, um, going into that direction. Because like this one, this opportunity for me to be here and be speaking about this, this this just came up about a week before I actually left Japan mm -hmm. because of Ed. Ed informed me about right. this whole thing, so it was kind of like it's very uplifting. Like I did not plan this whole thing. Like having this TV interview was <laughs> never part of the plan. Yeah. And then Ed contacted me, and she and he informed me that. His CEO, that was you, yeah. um, told him that I should have co I should contact you so we could talk about this whole um, helping out. So no, well, that, that's the whole thing is because that's one of the nice things of being able to. I always tell people my only two assets are a smile and a big mouth. You know, <laughs> and so we have we have that's what the show is all about is a smile and a big mouth and and allows people who are doing good things to be able to talk about it and if we reach. We, we have an audience out there, and somebody out there will say, hey, maybe I can do that where I am, or maybe I can just go out of my own neighborhood and do something or have an right. idea or whatever. And if we do that, then it is, it's a lot bigger than just one person, isn't it? Right. It's know? nice to be able to raise awareness and yeah. at the same time inspire other people to sure. do the same because there are a lot of people out there still needing help. You know, This is not a one-time deal. This is not a one-day sort of like do, a, a good, do something good just for one day. You know, hopefully I can continue this, but let's see how I can do it. Well, that's one of help. the big things. The name of this show is CSR, uh, Corporate Social Responsibility, and it isn't. This is what we always talk about in CSR. 
it's not just going out, uh, getting together on a Saturday afternoon, planting some trees, drinking some beer, right. and going home. Uh, that's not sustainability. You know, it's being able to do it. And we're going to have, uh, there's a lot of rebuilding that needs to be done, livelihood building in that area. And maybe you'll get some ideas after you, you see the people there and right. see what's going on. And that, that's the biggest thing, too, is that one of the, one of the sad things that's happened, there's been all of this outpouring of, of help. And, and goodwill from all over the world. It's, it's extraordinary. It brings tears to your eyes, really, you right. know, the nice yes, things that does. they're doing. And, but then, then when you get a month past or two months, these people still don't have homes, and they still don't. But the big thing is they don't have a livelihood, you know. And how do you build livelihoods again? And I certainly don't have any answers to those things. But certainly the rebuilding, if you're using local, local labor, uh, that will get that will yes. provide them a livelihood in construction or rebuilding and and some of the other things that go along and so uh, the more people that are there doing things will will probably create more ideas uh, right. and yeah. I would really be interested uh, after you've uh, done your distribution thing when you get back to Japan drop me a line and let me know how things right. worked out you know for sure for because sure, yeah. because that's uh, we'd like to let everybody know that. Uh, they can do the same thing. Yeah, I really, I, I am actually planning to organize another event mm -hmm. after this whole goods relief goods distribution, just so I can explain to the donors how or where their their money went, and also make them aware of the real situation based on my own personal experience. Oh, that's great. That's so that's great. my plan, because um, I want them to understand fully the the situation. Because mm -hmm. right now, us being away from the country, we only rely on the media. Mm -hmm. We only rely on on the news. So. Coming from a story is coming from me, who personally actually went. Mm -hmm. Right? If I ever go back, if I go back, then it's better. Well, that, no, I think that's Personal wonderful because international better. reporting is awful. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's just uh, not very, not not very correct or or factual or, or whatever a lot of the time. And because well, you, when you're reporting, you got to report sexy things, you know, like you know people dying and lying and de death in the streets and all of the sensational things, rather than the real, gee, here's, yeah. here are some people here. Here's how they can be helped. And we don't get that on, on the media at all. You yeah. know. So that's, that's the plan. It's mm -hmm. all planned right now. So, but that's what I'm thinking. That's what I have in mind. Give feedback to the donors as to how their money was able to help the victims of the typhoon. And then I'll give them, a, I'll be taking a lot of pictures, hopefully a lot of videos as well, so I can show them mm -hmm. the real situation. And if they're still willing to help, then I'm still willing to do it all over again, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, but I need all the support I can get. Well, that's great. Yeah, because you might come up with some, some ideas for sustainability, you know, yes. for, for, the, for the people there. Because there's, there are, I don't, I've forgotten how many tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people. So many of them out there. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, wow. That's a great idea. I hadn't thought of having a post, you know, a, a kind of a feedback uh, party or, a, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the plan. Just well a, a little event just mm -hmm. to gather all the donors again and just so they can see the, and the They can still come around and drink and jam, right? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the yeah, we can do a part two of Dine and Jam for a cause. Yeah, no, that's yeah. great. That's really great. And uh, so you said that you're, you're teaching English, uh, which is – what foreigners do in Japan. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly, I mean, we all started out that way, you know, uh, uh, teaching English. And how many, how many Filipinos do you know who are teaching English? Are there Not so many. Not uh, so many, right? For the longest time, I was the only Filipina in mm -hmm. my school. But now there are two of us. Two of you. Okay. So, so it, it, this is the thing that I've been trying to convince people there. Look at why are you sending groups to Europe and the United States that can come to the Philippines and, and do a month in Tagaytay or one of those places for not very much money, have the best instruction in the world as far as English is concerned because people, educated people here speak English, you know, they, and can teach it and, and can do right. all the other things. And the Koreans are doing that a lot. You know, the Koreans are coming. Uh, they're really coming. But I haven't been able to convince a lot of the Japanese to come yet, and I'd really like to be able to do that as well. You know? I want to be able to do that as well, to yeah. also to help the, the Filipinos in the Philippines right, to, right. You know, to, have their, to have a job. Sure, sure. That might be another way of, uh, of sustainability or things in the teaching area as well uh, to bring people here and do that. And so I hope you'll contact me and let me know. Uh, I will We'll sure stay in contact uh, yes. after you get back because those are other things that we can do to help.
people get jobs. You know, that, that's one of the hardest things, I think, uh, for me, because I've been here long enough to see families who are completely broken up by o the OFW uh, system. And if we can create jobs here, they don't need to go out as OFWs. Right. And, and I would really like to see that time come again to the Philippines. And, and we have the talent here. We have all of the things. We just need to somehow figure out how to do it in little pieces, whether it's teaching English or uh, feeding people or whatever, you know. Yeah. Uh, they have lots of things to do. The, the things that you're going to – you're going to be mostly buying foodstuffs, right? The, the things yes. that – Yeah, mostly food. Um, initially, I was thinking of buying banka. Mm -hmm. just to support the livelihood of the, the typhoon victims. But transporting that from where I will be coming from, it's going to be extremely challenging. So I just dis dismiss the yeah, idea. You can't carry one of those on your back. I right? can't. <laughs> it's it's huge. Yeah, so it's, it's impossible. Uh, and I don't know how to get that locally. Like in yeah. Tacloban, I don't know who to contact. I have no contacts there well, in there Tacloban. wouldn't be anything there at this point anyway, right? right? So they, I don't they'd know. have to build I one, I suppose. Yeah. You know. So even if I want to do that to support the livelihood, I can't because I, I don't know any way. To you know, that, that's an idea, so. though. Maybe that's uh, maybe you could get uh, somebody that knows how to build boats, find out somebody that would like to uh, provide the materials, and maybe you could go into building a boat. You know, that would be an interesting thing. Not donating a boat, but building a boat, you know. R there. Yeah, right, right and we're there. We're supporting the local right, the victims right. and themselves. And, and that's yeah, one so. of the, the things that I've read. You know, once something like this happens, you read all of the articles about what works and what doesn't work. But one of the biggest, the most important things that I've read that everybody said, look, at you've got to use local labor. Yes. Because you have to revive the livelihood, you know, or create livelihood. And the other thing, you need to lose local materials everywhere you can rather than bringing them in if you can, you know. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, Banca might be an interesting, that might be an interesting project, huh? For somebody that likes to build boats, if there's anybody <laughs> out there that knows how to build a small boat, and could teach people to do that, that would be a great thing because they, they, they lost all of their boats, right? They I mean, lost uh, in almost that area. everything. Yeah. And that's a, that's a fishing village, I, I guess, in the, yes. in the very beginning. So, well, there's already an idea that's just come out of. Uh, it wasn't, it maybe didn't really out just come. I mean, I got the idea also from, from some other organizations okay. from the internet. You know, I was researching like what the best ways are mm -hmm. to help them. Because right. I, I was thinking, okay, I can feed them now, but how about tomorrow? How about the days after now? Right. So I was thinking, how can I help them with their livelihood? Mm -hmm. So I did a lot of research. I was thinking, what's the best way to help? And one of the, the things that actually came up on my research is the banka thing. The banka, yeah. 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 But I asked my mom. I was like in constant communication with my family, asking them, is there anyone we can ask to build the boats? Mm to transport to Tacloban, and they're all saying, it's too big. How are we supposed to transport that from my hometown all the way to Tacloban? Absolutely. So and that's a long-term project anyway, right? It would, it would be something that wouldn't be something you could do in just a couple of weeks and, no, and it's put not. up and, and, and get it. No, it's not. And I didn't have the it, luxury know? of time as But, well. yeah, building, they, they probably need hundreds of boats at this point. I would think everything is gone anyway. And yeah. how would you, yeah, that's, that's a great idea. Maybe somebody out there can give us a call. Uh, you know, you can get hold of me, Larry, at lbrewhard.com anytime. Uh, you can get hold of GNN here. If you've got any ideas, let us know. We'll have you on the show, and we can talk about them because that's, uh, that's what we're here for. And, uh, guys, I didn't think about it. What are other things that people would need in an area like that? Well, are there any other so ideas other than Banca? Or, uh, well, of course, we need to build their houses as well. Houses. First, uh, yeah. That was, that was another thing that's really important is – Anybody that has the idea of helping to build houses or something, local people, local materials is the that's only the thing that works. Way. You yeah. don't go in and bring – somebody brings this kind of house that's a shack and somebody brings this kind of house that looks like a mansion. doesn't work out to have them sitting bes beside each, each other. other yeah. They have to really be uh, done locally with, the, with local labor and local materials. Well. And, and again, it creates – you're creating a livelihood and right. uh, getting the people – and maybe making something a little bit better that might withstand the <laughs> <laughs> something yeah. like. But it's really di this is one of the things you it's, know that, that I was I was a little upset uh, in some of the reporting because it seemed that people were expecting the government to be able to three days later fix everything, and boy, when when Ma Nature gets her dander up, she can really be tough, and right. it doesn't matter 
how good or bad the government support is, nobody's going to fix it in two or three days. It's we just not going to happen. We can't fix everything overnight. It's not going to be done. And I, w and I felt like there was some really, uh, it's okay to be uh, criticizing, but uh, some, of, some of it was unfair. They said, why isn't the government here helping? Because the government's dead. Everybody, <laughs> there, was nothing that, there was nothing left, I'm pretty sure the government know? is helping out. No, they are. Yes. No, they're, they're, certainly they're they are, and, and they're certainly doing the best they can. Right, you know? I'm sure they're doing the best they but can. But we can do, we can we help can, them. We can help, we can help them. them as well. And we do it on our own, yes. and we don't have to worry about the bureaucrats or bureaucracy or anything yes. if we do things on our own, and we do it on a small level. And that's the biggest thing that I like to get across to people out there. If you take it into your own hands and you manage it yourself, you don't have to get an okay from a right. bureaucrat it's to do it. It's you difficult, know. but it's not impossible. No, that, that's exactly right. So you're off this evening. Uh, yes. <laughs> have you decided? You haven't decided whether you're going to fly or you're going to not boat yet. Or? I'm still like on a waiting list. Oh, I <laughs> Either see. I'm flying home or I'm taking the bus home. Well. I hope you get a flight because buses are not my idea. <laughs> I'm willing to. They're, they're to not do the my idea of a, of, a, of a day at the beach. You know, it's not very <laughs> that is so true. But guys, uh, thank you so much for coming, Karen. Thank it's you so really much great, for this really great, great opportunity. No, great, great. Thank you for coming, and thank you for what you're doing. That's a wonderful my, thing my that you're pleasure. doing. That's my really pleasure. great. And all you folks out there, thank you once again for inviting us into your homes. It sure wouldn't be any fun without you. Until I see you again next week. Straight ahead.